obviously everybody knows you for that part of your life, but you played a major part. Like you have relationships with so many people, but you had a very special relationship with Tupac. How, how did that relationship between you and Tupac even come into existence? That relationship came when I was asked to do a cameo in Juice. I had run, come across Pac before through my relationship with Digital Underground, but really didn't know Pac like that. Um, when I went down to shoot my stuff with Juice, I brought my man Stretch with me from Live Squad because at the time we were trying to find a deal for Live Squad. And, uh, you know, them dudes smoke weed, man. They smoke hella weed. <laughs> and <laughs> them two clicked. Um, and once they clicked, Stretch me and my man, and we just all, every time we was together, it seemed like Pac clicked with him and clicked with me. And we would just, we would always hang out. Whenever dude came to New York or whatever he was doing, you know, especially after Juice, it was like we was always with him or he was always on our block or he would always come around and, and check us out. Like, we're the people that he called when he touched down in New York. So you really, like, because if, if, I, if I understand this right, wouldn't Pac be at your mom's crib? Like, yeah. wasn't y'all? Because really? he'd be around the way. He'd be at Stretch's mom's crib, and then they would come. If they came around to pick me up, Stretch had the MPV. If they came around to, to scrape me up, they'd jump out, Pac go and hug mom, say what's up to moms. Moms would feed them. You know, sit down, be in the living room, have a conversations with moms. Cause you know, Pac was a revolutionary man and my moms lived through that. So he would always ask my moms questions about what did the Panthers mean when she was coming up, like and being in New York at that time and what all of that meant and what was it like living her life when she can only drink from this water fountain and she couldn't look a white person in their eyes and you know, being scared to go certain places because you don't know how the police is gonna treat you. Those are the things that he was interested in talking to my mom about all the time. So Pac was just, people look at Pac differently than I do. Because I was with Pac before the first album came out and nobody was really checking for him like that, that hard, you know, until really until uh, Brenda's Got a Baby came out, but Holla If You Hear Me and all those stuff and Soldier Story, some of my favorite records. People wasn't checking for Pac like that until later on. So the Pac that I know is just Pac on the rise. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Tretch, uh, him hanging out with Tretch at the time, 93, Tretch is a bigger star than Pac is. You know, I remember us getting on the train going to the Apollo to go see Naughty perform. And we standing in the back and people like, yo, Ed Lover, what's up? Oh, that's that dude Tupac, right? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It, so it wasn't that frenzy. So it's everybody struggling at the same time. So you you busting down, you know what I mean? I, I was a bigger star than, than Pac at the time. But once he became a star, bro, it was it was over. It was over. It was and, over. And it's cr crazy. You just mentioned y'all was on the train going up. Yeah, to no, nobody, you know, it was a hey at low hey, hey at lover. Oh my God, they go to, you know, they go that guy from that movie Juice. You know? This is before Poetic Justice. This is before Death Row, this is before, you know, all, all, all the stuff. But once his star rose, man, it was over, bro. When he was down in Atlanta, he had the crib. We'd come down there. We, you know, we go to different Jack the Rapper conventions and all that stuff together, man. I had to get the dude out of jail one time. It was crazy, bro. Just, just being with Pac, he's just a, he was just our friend. We didn't look at him like, ah. I guess it's the way Tata and them look at Jay-Z. Like, that's just, mm -hmm. that's Jay. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what status he's at, that's that's our boy Jay. And that's how Pac was with us. That's my man Pac. Got you. What wasn't Pac supposed to be in Minister Society? Yeah, and that was the controversy with uh the Hughes brothers, because he said they fired him in some unpunk punk ass way, and he was mad at him. And and he yeah. had had that altercation with them in traffic in LA, and he came on your TV raps. And he was talking about it, and I was like, dude, this dude is in incriminating the crap out of himself. And that's the infamous me putting my hand over Pac's mouth. And if you look at you look at that episode, I'm wearing Carl Kanai, bro. I had met Carl Kanai on the streets of LA. Carl Kanai wasn't even popping like that yet. So mm -hmm. it was like all of us was, you know, all of us was supporting Carl. Pac was supporting Carl. Carl hadn't blown like that. Walk away hadn't blown like that. Those multi-million dollar companies had not happened yet. We were all just with each other, artists, supporting each other, loving each other, hanging out with each other, having fun with each other. 
And because of Stretch, Stretch bought Pac. Stretch and Pac was like this, dog. And when they made the Tupac story, I was mad that they left Stretch pretty much out of the damn movie. But they was like this, dog. They was like this. And when you saw one, you saw the other one. So Stretch being from around my way, being my guy, signed to our label, but I'm the one that bought Stretch in. Stretch is my dude, was my dude, yo. And that's his man, that's my man. That's how it went. You know, for all the, all the YGs, all the young guns around the way, Stretch was that head. So Stretch co-signed Pac. Pac was everybody's man. Hamo's man, his brother Chris's man, Gam's man. Everybody rode, we rode with Pac. Pac was our dude. Mm. So so was top was Pac always a wow? Because I remember that episode where you put your hand around Pac's mouth. Right. Was that just his natural personality, or did he just start to change as his star started to rise? That was that was just who he was, man. He was a to me, you know how people look at X, right? You look at DMX and say, damn, DMX is street. But he's still got this love for God because he's playing on his albums and he's doing. That's Pac. Caught between the street dude and the revolutionary. Caught mm. between the Black Panther Party. Caught between keep your head up. Brenda's got a baby. Dear mama. And, you know, everywhere we go, we see the same holes. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a contrast in who he was but that's exactly who he was he loved his friends he loved his family and above above everything else he loved black people bro he just wanted us to come up and he wanted america to be fair he was talking about the same thing then that we're talking about now he loved Public Enemy. He loved KRS-One. He loves consciousness. That's why it had to be some consciousness in his music and some street in his music. It was a battle. That's who he was. That wasn't, nothing was play played. Like if Pac got mad, there was no shutting him up.